Uh, and we're going to go to the Gospel of Mark chapter 4. So I'm going to ask you to turn there together with me um, to Mark uh, chapter 4. Um, and we're going to begin uh, at verse number 21 in Mark 4. Let's get that here. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Amen. So Mark chapter 4. Uh, verse 21. And we're going to read down to verse number 25. Let's start first in King James Version. We may go to New Living Translation as well. But right now, let's just um, look at Mark 4, 21 through 25. Uh, I'm reading from the King James Version. And it says, And he, Jesus, said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not be, to be set up on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was there anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he has. Amen. 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 Let's, uh, let's bow our heads and pray and get into the word. Father, we bless you right now for the reading of your word. Father, we thank you, God, that your words are spirit and life and that they uh, give us strength and cause us to be filled with hope. We ask you now, God, to speak from heaven, oh God. And Father God, just bless us with a listening ear and a receptive heart. And Father God, as we receive the word, give us understanding. And also, God, grant us a grace to walk out the word that we hear today. That, fathers, that Father, that we may be hearers of the word and, and not, uh, that we may be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yes. Father, we bless you right now in the name of Jesus Christ for just strengthening us by your spirit and for blessing us with your presence and with your word. Have your way with us. And we give you the praise for it right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 So we read Mark chapter 4, 21 through 25. We read it in, in the King James Version. I just also would like to read it in the New Living Translation. New Living Translation says, Then Jesus asked them, Would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or under a bed? Of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open, and every secret will be brought to light. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given, and you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, mm. even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So uh, we just read Mark chapter 4, 21 through 25, King James and in the New Living Translation. And our title today is Feed Your Faith. Amen. We want to talk about feeding your faith. And in the scriptures we just read, it doesn't matter, you know, where you read it, but if you, if, if you pay close attention to what Jesus is saying, when I say it doesn't matter where you read it, what version, the, the, the simple truth here is that God's truth, what Jesus is saying here, is that God's truth is not hidden from man. That God's truth is like a candle. And God doesn't place his truth under a bed or, you know, uh, you know, hide it under a bushel. But God places his truth out in the open, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a candle. That's why he says, who, he says, well, who would put a candle and hide it under a bushel or a bed? No one would do that. Uh, God's word is that candle. It's that light for us, right? It shows us how we should walk, how we should live. And what Jesus is saying is that God's truth 
is not hidden from man. Now, that doesn't mean that we know everything, but God's not hiding it, right? Not hiding it from the sense of like he doesn't want you to find it. He may, he may not put it out in the open as much because there may be times he wants you to search for it and dig for it. Because mm -hmm. huh? God says, look, he said, he said, he said it's the, you know, that it's the honor of the king to search a matter out, right? And so here we are, kings and priests of God, and we should take it as an honor to search out for the truth of God. Yeah. But God says, look, I'm not hiding it from you. Like, I don't want you to get it. You know what I mean? I don't want you to find it, right? Uh, it's, it's there. It's on the table, right? And, and But it's, it's that word that I'm, I'm presenting to you, he's saying, is, look, it's only going to be understood in, in the proportion in which you go after it. Mm -hmm. It's only going to be, he said, I'm not hiding it, but the only way you're going to get it is going to be dependent upon the proportion in which you go after it. The proportion in which you, you pay attention to it or you study it. That's why Jesus said that if, you, if, if you're not really paying attention to it, what little understanding you have is going to be taken away. Yeah. Why? Because you've got to continually give your attention to the word of God if you're going to receive the light of, of the instruction and the wisdom that God has. How many of you believe that God has wisdom for you in how you should live your life? Yes. That, that, that God has for you the way you should live your life. Yeah. And see, the Bible, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. How many, I mean, I can tell you there's been so many things I've done in my life that you couldn't have convinced me at the time I was doing it. It was right. Right, mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell me anything. I, I knew what I was doing was right. And I'll tell you what, I can't tell you how many times those things ended up wrong. Mm -hmm. Ended up not being good for me or not being good for my family or, or whatever. But it sure seemed right at the time. <laughs> yeah. But God's way is always right. But it doesn't always coincide with what we think is right. Mm -hmm. You know, because God does things. God has this way, right? God says things like, you know, you know, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Mm -hmm. But how many of us concentrate on being first? <laughs> you know what I mean? Want to be the first one on the line. Yeah. Ain't that what Black Friday is all about? You got to be first. Yeah. Right? We, this, this society and this world of ours uh, 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 like glorifies those who come in first place. And so we naturally want to be first. We want to be first in our class. We want to be first to get there sometime. Some of us. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> want to be first. Huh? That first in that full line. Yeah, so we want to be first. But, 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 you know, but God talks about, listen, it's not about being first, right? It's not about being first. You know, the, the world talks about those who get served. But God says what? That if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you must first learn to serve. Yeah. Yep. Right? Where the servant is the one who has, who is great in God's eyes, mm -hmm. not the one who served, right? Mm -hmm. The one who, who puts themselves last is the one who God looks to promote, not the one who's promoting themselves and putting themselves first. Mm -hmm. So God does things in a different way. And so there's so many times that we think we're doing something right, but it's not right. But God's way is right. And God says, I'm not putting my ways, and I'm not hiding it under a bushel. I'm not hiding it under a bed. I'm putting it up on the table for it to shine. But here's the thing. How much attention you going to pay to the light I'm giving up? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the amount of attention you pay to the light is going to depend on how much light you receive. Mm -hmm. And that's all Jesus is saying here. It's simple, but it's powerful, right? Right? Because, because we all want to live a victorious life. Well, I want to live a victorious life. <laughs> I don't know what to do with the silence, Lord. <laughs> I don't know what to do with the silence. So, <laughs> Glory to God. We all want to live a victorious life. Yeah. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise God. We well, <laughs> no question. Amen. We just have fun. Amen. We just have some fun. But we all want to live a victorious life. 
And, but God has the way to victory for us, right? And it's a sure way, right? And, 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 but the way we're going to get there is not by, you know, uh, sporadic, occasional attention to the light that God is setting right. up. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to be by a continual paying of attention and study and, 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 and acknowledgement and appreciation for what God is speaking unto us. Mm -hmm. And that's why it says, look, you got to feed your faith, right? Because, it, because everything about faith is based on God's, is based on God's word. But it's an interesting thing about feeding, right? Because, you know, we think about eating physical food and, and you know, um, most of us eat about two to three meals a day. Most of us, right? Mm -hmm. And we have some drinks in between, mm -hmm. some water, whatever your drink of choice is, whatever. And some of us have some Scooby snacks in between too, right? <laughs> yeah. Before, after, right? So we feed during the day. And, 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 and it's necessary for us to take in physical food because physical food fuels our bodies. It gives us energy. It gives us strength. Now, I don't know how many of us would, would get up in the morning and drink a cup of juice or a cup of coffee and then don't do anything else. No more eating, no more drinking until the next morning where you get another cup of coffee or another glass of juice. And then the next morning, Another cup of coffee, and another, and never eat anything else except morning to morning that cup of coffee or that juice. I'm telling you now, it wouldn't take too long for your body to give out. It wouldn't take too long for you to become malnourished. Right. It wouldn't become too long before you wouldn't take too long for you to become weak mm -hmm. and even sickly. Mm -hmm. That's true. And yet, God's word is spiritual food. And I believe God is saying to us, don't be satisfied with coming and taking a little in the morning. And then next time you get some, is the next morning. Right. Come on, somebody. Because you wouldn't eat like that physically. Right. And how many of you know God's word is far more important than physical food? Amen. God himself said, man does not live by bread alone, but by yeah, every true. word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how we live. Now, some of them say, well, no, 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 well, I, I read my Bible in the afternoon, too. Well, good. <laughs> and you know me by now. It is not about time, how much time you spend, how many times you do it. It's not that. It's about what you get out of it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because, see, some people can say, well, I read my Bible four times a day. Yeah, but you're getting anything. <laughs> That's the important right? Don't just be satisfied with counting how many times or how many minutes or how many hours. But the bottom line is we need to feed our faith. And in order to feed our faith, the only way you can feed your faith is through the word of God mm -hmm. in some form. Why? Because faith cometh by yeah. hearing and hearing by word. the word of God. So you can't get faith any other way. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so what we need to do, the same way we feed our bodies two to three times a day with some snacks in between and all of that, we should be feeding our spirit man the same way. Yeah. Don't be satisfied with feeding your spirit man in the morning and then maybe a little bit at night or whatever. It, right? And listen, this, I'm not trying to lay out for you because it's between you and God. I'm not trying to lay out for you what you should be doing. That's between you and the Lord. But, but I believe God is saying unto us, we need to feed our faith because if we don't feed our faith, we will starve it. Amen. The same way if you don't feed your body, you will ultimately end up starving it. Right. Amen. Now here's the other thing. And, 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 it's just true. See, you start working out. You start, you know, you start working out, and, and now you're strong. <laughs> you got six pack, man. You got muscles bulging. But anybody who tell you when they get strong like that, they need more fuel to fuel their body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You need more fuel to fuel your body now. 
You know what I mean? You need more, maybe you need now, you may need more protein. You may need more nutrients, right? To fuel your body, right? Because you're stronger now, you're doing more things. You need more energy, right? You can't bulk up and get all strong and then go back to how you were eating before and think you're gonna maintain those same gains that you made, right? Yeah, you was exercising, but you was also exercising and, and, and you were taking in more calories too. You know what I mean? You were taking in more protein. Anybody who does any kind of bodybuilding know how important protein is for, for you to be building muscle. Yes. So what are you going to do now? If you went back to your old way of eating when you were this 98-pound weakling, I'm telling you this, you will lose your gains. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That means you got to keep it up. So what happens then when you and I grow stronger in the faith? Can we afford to slip back? Because because this is what happens, and I'm just telling you the truth, because everybody's got to be careful of this, because, see, here's the one thing about the Word of God. You can read the Word of God, and then you can get start to get comfortable with what you know. That's true. I know that. Yeah. Oh, that story, oh, the mustard seed face, yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, the wall of the Jericho, thing. oh, yeah, yeah, I know that, yeah, I know that, I, I know that. Oh Samuel, yeah. Oh David and Claudia, oh, yeah, I know. I know. I know that. I, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. And you can start to be careful of, of, of now you know it, but oh, you stop reading it. And every time you stop reading, every time you stop taking in the word, I want you to realize you stop feeding your faith, and you can then go back to being a spiritual weakling if you don't continue to feed your faith. That's true. But isn't it good to remember the word? Yeah, it's good to remember the word, but don't you know something? God didn't just say to us that we should remember the word. In the book of Proverbs, he said that word should be in front of your eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but if something's in front of your eyes, that mean, that should mean you reading it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I can just remember what the preacher said. I can just remember. I read through the Bible the whole year. I've done that every year for the past five years. I know the word. The word is in me. So I can recall it. Well, praise God. But let me ask you a question. Do you remember the steak you had last week? <laughs> it was a good piece of steak, wasn't it? That was a good steak. Yeah, that was the best steak I ever had. You remember it? Yeah. You, all right. Let me ask you this. Why don't you try sustaining yourself on the memory of that steak? Don't eat anything else. Just the memory. <laughs> Just the memory of the state. Do you think you can do it? No. Nope. Then why do you think you can sustain yourself just on the memory of God's word? Mm -hmm. it, it, God wants us to continually take it in, right? Mm -hmm. Continually feed on it the same way we feed on physical food. We wouldn't dare try to live on the memory of a steak and a baked potato. So don't try to just live on the memory of the sermon from last week or from two weeks ago or from three weeks ago. You got to keep getting that word in you. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing, right? God, is, that, that conjunctive is important. It's like a continual cycle of hearing and hearing, hearing and hearing. Hear, that means don't stop hearing that word. And every time you read it, you hear it. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's so many ways to hear the word. So we don't want to get to that point where we're feeding on the word too sporadically. We want to feed on it constantly so that our spirits won't become malnourished, but we will become strong. Now, we keep hearing this word, right? And you say, well, how? You know, we, we, we hear the word. As, as we speak it. We can hear the word when, when someone preaches it or teaches it. So you can listen to stuff. I mean, you listen to stuff like in your car or mm -hmm. when you're doing chores around the house or, right, right? you can just turn it on, right? That's, that, that's feeding your spirit, right? Yeah. It's, it's a feeding of your spirit. You read in the morning and now maybe late morning, early afternoon, you turn on something or whatever to feed your spirit. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Keep at that. Right? And understand that as you're doing that, you are feeding your spirit and you're becoming spiritually stronger. Right? Yep, yep. Right? You know, if you have the opportunity, amen, you want to teach somebody the word, like if you teach the Bible study or you teach Sunday school or you teach a little child or whatever, I'm telling you this, 
That's another way of building up your faith. That's true. Because I would hope that before you try to teach anybody anything, you get into the word yourself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? right? Don't try to tell somebody something. Right? You, you better get into that word yourself. But teaching is so powerful too because it allows you to get into the word, prepare yourself, and then you go and you share with somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can you can hear that word, right? You can hear that word by reading it. You can hear that word because someone else is preaching and teaching it. You could be sharing that word with somebody else. And the other thing is, is, is that you can meditate on that word, which means that you read something this morning. Maybe you want to think deeply. I praise God for what you said, uh, Brother Matt. You said, I just been I just been thinking about this, this, you know, you on your mind, right? About what it is that you should do. Right? And God's telling you, well, you just need to be thankful. Mm -hmm. Right? And sometimes you just get a word like that, and you gotta just think about that thing. Consider it deeply. Don't run away from it, but stay on that thing. Mm -hmm. Because God is a communicating God, I tell you that. Right? Yeah. But He wants to know how much attention you're going to pay. I want to read again what Jesus said in the New Living Translation. In verse 24 of Mark 4, He said, Pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. You hear that? Mm -hmm. yeah. The closer you listen. So this is the thing. Don't. Uh, that's why sometimes it hurts my heart. It really does. I'm not mad at people when this happens. It just hurts my heart. When someone comes up to me and goes, Oh, brother, you weren't at the meeting on, on this past Saturday. You missed it. The preacher sure preached the message. And you know what I say all the time? Because if it was that good, I want to know. What was the message? And I can't tell you how many times I heard somebody say, I really can't remember, but that word was good. Mm, that hurts my heart. Because that just says something to me. You didn't get nothing from that. Something had to touch you. Right? Because the closer you pay attention, that's what Jesus said. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. And why is understanding so important? Because the Bible says so, right? Mm -hmm. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all you're getting, get understanding. Right? Mm -hmm. Get understanding. And, and Jesus said we'll get more understanding the closer we listen. So listen, we need to get this word now so that we can feed our spirit. Read that word, amen. You know, just have a battle plan, right? I don't know why all of us do this already, right? But I believe God is saying something to us. And that is this. It's time to up our battle plan. Why? Because if, if we're going to take more territory in this earth, if we're going to do more things for God in this earth, if we're going to accomplish all of the, all of the possibilities that God has for us, I had to stop because I'm just thinking. The word says, nothing is impossible for God. Right? Mm -hmm. With God, right? With God, all things are possible, and all things are possible to those that believe. And see, here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not putting any limits on what I can do in this earth before I leave. I'll tell you that right now. And I, I say this to you, and you aren't either. Amen. 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 Right? You aren't going to put any limits on what you can do in this earth before you leave. Glory to God. Amen. But if we're going to be able to do these things that are all things are possible type of things, Man, we're going to have to be built up in our faith, y'all. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, there, there's a faith. How many of you know there's a faith for getting an apartment? And there's a different faith for owning the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a faith for getting an apartment. But it's a different type for getting the building. And you know, wait a minute. But, but what do you mean a different type? What I mean by it is, see, the faith for the apartment may be able to, to successfully battle against the, de the little demons that don't want you to get the apartment. Mm -hmm. But the faith to get the whole building, you might have to fight against principalities and powers now, things that are at a higher level, a higher... <laughs> you, the, the preachers used to say back in the, in the, in, in the early 2000s, late 90s, what? What is that again, babe? It says something... Uh, uh, Glory to God. New levels. Yes, see, that's why I was mad, mad, mad at that woman. New levels. <laughs> New devils. New devils. <laughs> right? 
New levels, new devils. You want to go to a higher level? Let me tell you something. The devils on the fifth floor are different than the devils on the first floor. Yeah, that's true. The higher you climb, the more resistance you are going to receive from the kingdom of darkness. And so it's fine that you can beat all the demons on the first floor if you're going to stay on the first floor. But if you want to go to the to the fifth floor and all you got is first floor fighting skills, I'm telling you now, you're going to get beat up on the fifth floor. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. This ain't hard. Amen. Wow. That's why you got to get into this world because then it'll build your faith. And as your faith get built, you start getting second floor faith. <laughs> then you get third floor faith. And then you keep reading the word, now you got fifth floor faith. And you say, come on. And then fifth floor demons come out, they see you, they just go running. <laughs> yeah. Demons don't run. Oh, yes, they do. According to the Bible, it says what? Submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. I didn't make that up. God said that. So don't tell me we can't make demons run. The Bible says we resist the devil, he'll flee. But how did Jesus resist the devil when he was in the wilderness? When Satan told him to throw himself down? When Satan told him to turn the, the rock into bread? Well, how did Jesus resist Satan in the wilderness? The word. He kept saying, it is written. Yeah. Right? So how are we going to resist the devil? Same way. With the word. And, and, and come on somebody. You see how it all comes back to the word. Amen. It all comes back to the word. And so that's why we got to get this word in. Because if you want to go to the fifth floor, you better have some fifth floor word in you. You want to go to the penthouse, you better have some, amen. You understand what I'm saying, right? That you get that, you get build up enough in your faith that when you get to the new levels, you're able to handle the new devils. Yeah. That's why so many people go running like the sons of Sceva because they try, to, they try to deal with demons and demonic forces but without building up their faith. That's a recipe for disaster. Amen? Amen. And so we got to read this word. So, so I believe God is just saying to us, I have a plan for you. And the Bible says that, right? God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. <laughs> yeah. That's the plans that God has for all of us. God has a hope in the future for you. Mm -hmm. And it's bright. Yeah. And it's filled with doing great things. Doing things that you never could have believed you could accomplish. I was talking to God just this morning. And I'll tell you when y'all left now. And I'm, I'm at home, and, and I'm talking to God, and I'm tying my tie, and, and, I, and I'm talking to God as I'm tying my tie. And, and, he, and, I, and I said to him something that's kind of, I was watching somebody on TV. And I'm looking at him, and I wasn't, can I just be honest? Go ahead. Be honest. Okay, it was, a, it was a preacher. I wasn't <laughs> overly impressed. So I just said, I said, I said, Lord, help. I said, no, I'm not going to say that. He said, say it. <laughs> 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 I, said, I said, I said, I said, well, I could do that. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you how, I, how me and God talk. I said, I could do that. What I meant was, well, I could be on TV like that. And then I started to say this. I said, I'm 55 now, and God said, don't even start. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So like, he said, don't even start. So I immediately stopped talking. Uh -huh. That wasn't a thing to be saying. Uh -huh. What's my point? The point is, it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. Right. It's about the faith that you have for the vision that God has given you and the plan that he already has for you. Uh -huh. God has great plans for you, had great plans for you before you even got here. Uh -huh. And many people go to their grave not even scratching the surface for what God had for them to do in this life. And that's one of the tragedies of all times. We talk about all these tragedies. I'll tell you what's tragic. But for people to go to their grave without fulfilling their purpose and even scratching the surface of their potential. Yeah. There's greatness on the inside of each one of us. 
Right? Amen. And and I have no problem saying I'm going to do great things in this earth before I'm done. Amen. How many how many with me? Amen. Right? I'm doing great things in this earth before I'm done. And not and not because wanting my name and my honor. Nah. The only name that's supposed to be lifted up is God's name. Yeah. Right? But how many of you know that one of the best ways that you can honor God is by fulfilling the potential that God gave you? Yes. Right? And walking that thing out and giving him all the glory for it. Mm -hmm. When people try to give you credit and all that, you go, glory to God. Mm -hmm. Give praise unto God. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to do that, people, we're going to have to make sure we continually feed our faith and not be satisfied with, and you know, I like my routine as much as the next man or the next woman, but how many of you know, sometimes routine can get us to a place of complacency yeah. mm -hmm. and we plateau. That's what they call sometimes in the gym when you're working out, when you sort of get to a certain level and you don't go any higher, mm -hmm. you plateau. Mm -hmm. Because you come to the gym every day and you've been running three miles on the treadmill and you lost weight and your legs got strong or whatever, but you keep running three miles. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? right? Your body now is used to three miles. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to up it. Mm -hmm. If you want it out to see more gains, mm -hmm. you're going to have to run four miles. And then when you get to four, you're going to have to run five. And then after five, you may have to do something totally different. Mm -hmm. Right? Because your body gets trained. Your muscles get trained. You need to shock your system sometimes. You know what I mean? You need to, when your, your body comes in, your body already knows. You go into the gym and, and you, your legs are talking to your feet. <laughs> yeah, he about to get on the treadmill. Yeah, what time is it? Yeah, you go to the, what time is it? <laughs> and your mom, <laughs> it's nine thirty. It's nine thirty. So yeah, five minutes. We are gonna be on the treadmill, but we we'll be out of here. We'll be out of here by ten thirty-five. We'll be out. <laughs> there ain't no. Your body ain't no. But sometimes you need to walk into the gym. Your body go. We get ready to go on the treadmill. You go right past the treadmill and you shock your body. Where are we going? Uh, and instead, you start doing some squats or something, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> and you're like, that noise you hear in your body go, what in the world going on? Uh, <laughs> we don't do this! Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why do I say that? Sometimes you gotta shock your spirit. Yeah. Stop doing the same thing all the time. You know, I said this before too. I said sometimes you read in the same chair. And I know you like the chair. You like the couch. Get into a difference. Do something different. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Just do something different that will quicken your spirit a little bit. Let it know. Oh, this is different. How many of you respond differently with a greater curiosity when you go to a different place instead of the same old, same old? That's true. Right? There's something about difference that just sparks us. and so We start now looking and paying attention and, 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 and taking things in that maybe we wouldn't before because if you're in the same old place, you know where everything is. Yep. I believe God is saying to us, feed your faith. Let's not get complacent, right? Mm -hmm. Let's take it up. Let's realize that the same way that, that, that more exercise and, and more weight training and, and, and more physical activity makes us stronger than more spiritual activity makes us stronger too. Yes. Right. And the way we're going to do it is by feeding our faith. Amen. So a couple of things that we're going to get on our body here. So what, what's, what's going to be our battle plan? Okay, we're going to feed our spirit several times a day. Amen? Amen. 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 Several times a day. We're going to feed our spirit. And, and here's the thing. Think about it in that way. Because here's the funny thing. You're either feeding your spirit or you're feeding your fear and your doubt. But some, something's getting fed. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Because if we're not standing in faith, then we're standing in fear and doubt. What do I mean? Well, see, you could be standing in faith, believing your bills are being paid, are going to get paid, or you, you, you don't know if they're going to get paid. See, that's doubt. That's fear. Right? And every time we think on it, we feed it. As a man thinketh in his heart, the Bible says, so, so is he. It's about how we think. Right? So, so if we're thinking about, oh, I don't know if, I don't, I don't know if my kid, I'm going to have enough money to send my kid to college. That's fear and doubt. That's being fed every time we think a thought like that. Mm -hmm. Right. 
But if we're thinking the thought of, yeah, the tuition bill's coming, but God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Now you're feeding your faith. Mm -hmm. right? right? Now you feed your faith. And so we either, we have to make a conscious decision. I'm feeding my faith. And if you want to starve anything, starve your fear and starve your doubt. How do you starve your fear and starve your doubt? Don't feed it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when the devil comes whispering in your ear, how you going to get out of this? Don't you go now, gonna, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this one, child. <laughs> See, because now you're just feeding it. And a lot of us feed it because, like, we have an issue and we have a problem. Then we go start talking to other people. Why are you telling other people your back hurt? Mm -hmm. Now they're walking on. Oh, man, yeah, he got a bad back. Now he, then he tell you. And now you know he got a bad back. And now we start to say, hey, have you seen Joe? Oh, yeah, I don't know. He's not been doing it. What's the matter with Joe? He got a bad back. How do you know? Because Joe opened up his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. If, oh boy, I, I praise God for this. I'm not so, so we should never say we got a bad back? No, but say it to the right people. Amen. Right. Say it to the person who can go and say, nah, we ain't standing for this bad back. Come here, let me pray for you. Mm -hmm. right. Say it to the person who's not just going to spread your news around town, but somebody who's going to say to you, oh, you got a bad back. I used to have that too. This is what I started to do. God showed me this, and now my back is. Better. You understand what I mean? Because there are people like that. Yes. But don't just say to any old body. <laughs> There's so many times that I uh have, -huh, my wife tell me, you know, her back and her. And sometimes when the other day, and I'm going to tell on you, sister, for now, because uh, <laughs> you said, what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> But she told me a couple of weeks ago, her shoulder had been hurting. She said, my shoulder's hurting. I said, when's it been hurting? She said, it been hurting for weeks. Mm -hmm. I got upset. I want to know why she didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I would start praying for her. And if God told me to tell her to do something, do this or that, I would share that with her. Mm -hmm. I can't do it if I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? So for us, it's like, no, you need to tell me. I need to tell you. Because I know something. You're going to pray for me, I'm going to pray for you. You know what I mean? We're going to stand in faith and we're going to receive an answer from God. Yes, you to her? Hmm? Yes. Right? So you got to tell me. Yes. So that we can pray. Mm -hmm. Right? So we got to have to make, we got to make sure that we don't just tell the wrong people. Mm -hmm. But feed your spirit, don't feed your doubt. And that, that's why, the reason why I said that is because I don't want it, I don't want it to be like, oh, we're going to, be fake and pretend. Oh, my back does hurt. So what am I supposed to do? I'm just going to act like my back don't hurt. Mm. Did I say that? No. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you don't act like your back don't hurt. But you don't need to go around confessing the thing of your life either. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. But if something is going wrong with you or something's going on with you, go, make sure you find a person of faith. Share that with them. And then get to the point where they, let's touch and agree and let's pray about this, that God will move in whatever situation, whether it's a health situation, a financial situation, a relationship situation, because the bottom line is, if you don't want it, why put up with it? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. If you don't want it, why put up with it? And as long as you put up with it, you're going to have it. That's not true because I have I've been I've been broke for, for fifteen years and I don't want to be broke. <laughs> what have you been saying for fifteen years? What have you been doing for fifteen years? Right? right. And here's the thing, and if you've been doing the right thing, who's to say that tomorrow your breakthrough ain't coming? Right. Mm -hmm. right? Right? Right. But we got to stay in it, right? So, so, but, so what I want to say is, make sure we start our doubts. When those doubts come, and doubts come to everybody, because the devil, the devil comes after all of us, right? And he right. comes whispering doubts. Did God really say it? This is going to happen. He's going to come whispering doubts to you. Don't repeat them. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Don't give life to them. Starve them. Mm -hmm. Starve them by just not paying attention. I'm not feeding into that. I'm not feeding into fear. I'm not feeding into doubt. I know when I started the business years ago, my phone wasn't ringing. 
I told people, <laughs> like, you know how that feels, don't you? I told people I felt like Will Smith and I am legend. <laughs> 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 Ain't nobody. I had a text in my house down from. <laughs> you know what I mean? And nobody's coming in. And I'm thinking, I just started. And I'm thinking, did I make a mistake? I thought that for a minute. I said, no, I'm not going to think that. And I went and I came my off and I got on my knees and I just prayed. God, I had nothing else to do. Lord, no, I had no work. <laughs> I had no work. My work. <laughs> Are you going to use your time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I got on my knees, man. I just prayed, and I was praying, and I was praying things that it was hard for me to believe, or hard for me to believe in that situation. But it wasn't that; it was God's words. So I just said, "No, this word is true." So I just had, I confessed that. I confessed it. The change when I got up on my knees? No, but I felt stronger. Amen. And now I felt I could resist those things. And and in time, God turned it around. Yes. Wow. Right? But the key is to stay in faith. Feed your faith, amen? And do it several times a day and realize you're either going to be feeding something, your fear or your doubt, but start or your doubt or your faith. Start those things and feed your faith and say, I'm going to feed my faith. Amen. Time for my faith to eat. The same way you say time for you to eat, time for my faith to eat. Amen. Amen? amen. Time for me to feed my faith. What time is it? I, I saw it. Can I get back in 15 minutes? I got to go feed my faith. People start looking at you like you're crazy. That's okay. <laughs> Feed your faith. Read. Listen to the word taught. Speak it out your mouth. Meditate on it. Start your doubts. And, and then lie. In the word, listen. There's no word. I'll say it this way. Pastor Lane taught us a long time ago. The only word you know is the word you do. Yep. Mm -hmm. You heard that? The only word you know is the word you do. You don't know about forgiveness if you ain't forgiving people. That's right. Right? You don't know about giving if you ain't giving nothing to anybody. Right. You don't know about praying if you ain't praying. The only word you know is the word you do. So feed your spirit. Start your doubts. Meditate on that word. We read the scripture today from Psalm 1. Meditate on that word. Keep thinking it over and over in your head. God gives you a word, Brother Matt. God gives you a word. Whoever and Sister Cheryl, God, give you word. You think about that thing over and over. And sometimes, listen, you don't need to know the whole Bible. You just need to know what God is saying to you at this moment. Mm -hmm. Right? If God says to you sometimes, God just says to you, hold on. That's a word from the Lord. We in the Bible. No, it ain't about Sometimes it's going to be in the Bible. Sometimes it's going to be in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And all you need to know right there is, hold on. Yeah. God's telling me to hold on. That's my word from the Lord. That's my word from the Lord. Bill Collector ringing my phone. Hold on. Yep. Right? I don't know where the, where, where the rent money coming from. Hold on. Amen. Maybe that's all you got. But it's enough. Amen. Amen. Just Amen. keep meditating on that word. The other thing I want to say is this. Spend time with people who will build up your faith. I will tell you right now. One of the greatest things I thank God for that he's given me is the ability to walk away from people who waste my time. Listen, I'm telling you right now, people fall into two camps. They either are building you up or they're tearing you down, sapping your strength. You got to be careful who you hang around with. Now, there's going to be times, because see, some of the people who sap your strength are in your family. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, you know that. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm not, telling you, I'm not telling you run away from your family, but before you go over there, you need to know that person's a handful. <laughs> make sure you, <laughs> you better make sure you fill up your faith. You know, you go going to the family reunion, and Uncle John's going to be there. <laughs> You better, be, you better take some extra. You better take some extra. Amen. But here's the thing. But as much as you can, spend time around people who will build your faith up. Mm -hmm. spend, people, spend time around people who, who, who cause you to dream. Mm -hmm. Spend time around people who cause you to, to see vision. Spend, people, spend time around people who don't say about, you can't do that, or this is impossible. They don't talk language like that. Mm -hmm. 
right? Amen. Spend time around people, all right, who are upbeat and who are who always look toward the future with hope and expectation. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, those are the people because why? Because it will get into your spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will get into your spirit. And, and so spend time around people of faith who can help and feed your faith. Through their example and through their encouragement and through you know their, just just the way they go about their lives, build you up because we need that in in, 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 in this world. And the last thing I say is just actively do it. Don't passively do it and say, "Oh yeah, this sounds good," and then go back to what you always do. That's the biggest mistake I think people in the church make. God gives us a word every week that's helpful for us for daily living, and we agree with it. And then we go next week and waiting for another one. And don't do anything with the one we heard last week. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We have to put it into action. Yeah. So, it's, so when Jesus said, listen, pay close attention, because the more attention you pay, the more understanding you get. Don't simply agree with that. Say, say to yourself, I'm going to pay more attention. I'm going to pay more attention. When God says, feed your faith, don't just go, that was a good word. No, now go feed it. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> go feed it. Feed it several times a day. Starve your doubts. Meditate on that word. Spend time with people who will feed your faith and actively go about doing it. Amen. I believe it will, it will change your life. Amen? Amen? It will change your life. And so there's things for us to do, y'all. Amen? Individually, collectively, God is moving. He needs more people of faith to be in position to be used in this earth, to do the things that he wants to get done in this earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Jesus already walked the earth. Now it's up to us to carry out the plan, the mandate. But the only way we're going to do it, we're going to have to be people of faith, and we're going to have to feed our faith, especially as we go to higher and higher levels in God. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going. You going with me? Amen. 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 I'm going. Yes. Yes. Amen. I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm still, I got stuff to do, man. Amen. I got, I got some, I got some stuff to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Got some dreams to dream. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. How about you, Sister Pennell? Alright then. Strap it up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> You're going higher, amen? Amen. 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 God said to Joshua, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, and do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. We can make our own way prosperous. Yeah. We can assure our own good success. And I don't say that in a, in a prideful way. I'm saying it as in a way consistent with what God is saying. I've already given you the blueprint. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's through my word. Mm -hmm. It's through my word. Amen. Let's rest on our feet and pray today. Glory to God. It's through the word of God. Let's feed our faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father, we bless you today. Glory to God. We thank you, God, for... <clears throat> The devil is a liar. We thank you, Lord, yes. for the word you have spoken unto yes, us Father, on today. You, Father, you've encouraged us, you've implored us, you've admonished us to feed our faith. Yes. God, you've shown us, oh God, that we wouldn't treat our bodies the way we treat our spirit, man. Mm. Feeding a little bit every morning and being yes. satisfied with it until the next morning. God, you said we wouldn't do that to our flesh, how dare we do it to our spirit. Yes. So Father, we ask you first of all to forgive us, oh God, if we have been less than diligent yes. in feeding our faith and our spirit, man. Yes. But Father God, as you forgive us, God, we make a determination right now to repent, to turn from the ways we've been going, yes, and to Lord. turn unto you, oh God. Yes. Yes. Heeding your voice yes. to feed our faith several times a day to feed it on the word of God. Father, we're believing that as we do, as we pay more attention and closer attention to the word that is spoken unto us, the words that we hear, Father, we believe the words of Jesus are true. We yes. shall have greater understanding. Yes. Understanding of the word of God, understanding of the will of God, 
understanding of the ways of God, understanding of what you are speaking unto us, guiding us and leading us, understanding our next move that we should yes, make. Lord. Father, we believe that we will become spiritual giants, not because of who we are, but you said it's not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. spirit. Thank you, God. And so, Father, we thank you today for this word of encouragement, this word of strength, this word of liberation. We thank you, oh God, for giving us thank this you. word. Thank Feed God. your faith, Father. We hear you speaking from heaven, thank and you. we shall hearken and do. And Father, we believe that as we do it, we shall be blessed in our deeds. And so, yes. Father, we thank you right now. Glory to God for bringing us to higher levels of faith that we may go to higher levels of achievement and accomplishment in this earth, yes, all God, to the praise God. of your glory. Father, we give you all the honor right now for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.